How's it going? Tom's here. I am. Will he will he survive the trip to Dallas? Only time will find out. Oh, I've done it before. Yeah, Not you'll Dallas, be fine. But... I was having that conversation with Pat today about uh <laughs> where the casualty may lie. Yeah, Pat Pat was the odds on favorite last year and he did actually well for himself outside of losing his face. Yeah. That was his only casualty. Yeah. But I uh I've got a I've got a I've got an odds favorite, I think, this year. Are are you going <laughs> off the board with the uh a complete newcomer that's driving down to meet us or no 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 i'm staying on the board okay do we reveal it i don't give a shit oliver <laughs> that's where that's where my money lies i expect to get a phone call friday night or saturday after the draft of just drunken bullshit oh yeah he he's he's one that does enjoy himself and but you guys all should. I'm jealous. I, I have to sleep with the bastard, so <laughs> I'll um I'll sit here and enjoy myself Saturday night while I watch the draft. So you'll be in Vancouver next year. Oh yeah. That means I got to get a passport, eh? You and me both. Yeah. Alright. God damn it. Is it really in Vancouver next year? It's really in Vancouver. Jesus fucking Christ. Hey, at least we're going up north in the summer. Yeah. That's that's good. I'm good with that. I like how Raleigh decided to prep me in advance for Dallas by going, shit, we'll make 108 degree heat index. Yeah, what the hell is this shit, dude? It is so just pointlessly hot. It's annoying. It's like Vegas hot. Like when you step off the plane in Vegas, you're just like, Jesus, how do people live in this? Right. But at least Vegas is the quintessential dry heat whereas here it's actually humid and hot true yeah it's just it's ugh. although on the island it, it was we'd have like 82 85 degrees and it would be the worst because we were right near the ocean so it was muggy as all get out Oof. that's no you fun just, you just didn't want to move like oh it's only it's not even gonna be ninety. So when I moved down here, it was like ninety five with like say fifty percent humidity. It's like oh it's not too bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well we got a lot. We got a lot on the docket tonight. We do. Uh, some good, not some not so good. You gotta talk about money in the bank. Here, here this is so this is the part as we pull back the curtain here. Where we figure out what we're going to talk about, and I open 800 tabs in Google Google Chrome. <laughs> I so just, money in the bank. <laughs> I've got the phone. All right, there's that wiki page. Uh, Take over. <laughs> I'm just disappointed as Mike Flanagan sends down a message that says the Southwest drink vouchers that he had didn't get used and are expired now. Boo! Boo this man! Boo all to the boo. How do you not drink free booze? Just buy a plane ticket just to drink the free booze. Like, I don't understand. I mean, none of our flights are, well, I think like an hour, hour and a half from skip here to skip there. So it's not like you'd even get time to drink that much, but I want one. Right. Plus, we figured it out. We have the early flight tomorrow, which is which will be in the air before the state of North Carolina will legally sell you alcohol. So there's no airport booze. And then on the way home, the flight that we have from Dallas, Dallas, uh, Texas does not sell alcohol on some days before noon. So no airport what? booze on the way home. What blue hell is this? Well, New York was like that. New York didn't sell alcohol before 12. Well, they didn't sell alcohol before 12 here on Sunday either until, what, a couple of months ago. Something like that. <sighs> it's 2018. Let me drink whatever I want, please. But the Lord. <laughs> um, take over. Oh, big Cass. Yeah. Let me pull up. I, mean, I want the exact statement to read. The one fucking sentence they wrote. Cass ain't here no more. <laughs> I 
<laughs> would have loved to have clicked on that article and seen that. Uh, bada bing, bada boom, ain't nobody left in the room. <laughs> what else? Vader, obviously. Yeah. Passing away today. Or yesterday. Um, Thursday. today. Is that, news is that, got out today, is it, at least. Yeah. News came out. News broke today. Shit, there was something else I saw that I wanted. It was like, that's a good three minutes of, of content. Where is it? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, Charlotte's going to be in the body issue. That's got like four hours of content for me. But For you. For me. It's a Patreon exclusive, I guess. <laughs> For the Patreon JC's, I set up just to give my own money to. JC's alone time with the body issue. Wow. Yeah. Get ready for that. Uh, Patreon lens or whatever it's called. Focus. Whatever the hell it is. Um. Yeah. All right. Let me, let me check this audio here. You're listening oh, to I can be louder. A proud part of the Section 328 Network, bringing you all the best in wrestling Come from on. WWE, Come New Japan, and beyond. There we go. That's pretty. Jacob Slavin got a fifth place vote for Norris. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I mean, I like the guy, but... <laughs> but okay. Sure. Slavin was closer in the Lady Bing... Uh, voting. Kopitar won the Selkie. Yeah. That just popped up. Slavin actually got a first place vote for uh, Lady Bing. Ooh. He's so gentlemanly. (laughs) Did you hear all this background noise? Did you hear that? Mm Mm-mm. You can hear all the static? I just hear me gulping right now. No. I figured out what it was. All right, are we ready? Are we ready to get this on the road? I think so. Chat, are we ready to get this on the road? Nobody said a word. It's creepier when you know people are watching and they're not saying anything and they're just staring at you. Well, my kids are all doing other things at the same time, so. <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. Cole may have something on another window. <laughs> Tara, on the other hand, may be asleep. <laughs> yes. Hi. <laughs> she's, she's here. <laughs> she's awake for now. For Hashtag now. for now. Right. Let me adjust my mic. Uh, keep. <laughs> then I'm being harassed by my own family. Keep it moving. All right. Cool. Listen, sometimes you just got to get hype in the chat. It's Twitch. You got to like, yeah. get some Kappa emotes all over the place and shit. <laughs> All right, you ready for this? I think so. All right, let's do it. Hey, Tom. Hey, JC. How's it going tonight, buddy? It's going all right. Yeah? Yeah. Having a good week? Yeah, getting hyped for uh, airplane flying. Ooh, where are you going? Going to the Big D, Dallas. (laughs) Be, Be careful how loud you say that and where you say that. But, but I like the big D. I'm excited about the big D. Okay, Tom, let, let's move past the big D. <laughs> God, and okay. uh, let's let's talk about wrestling instead. What do you say? Yeah, that's less homoerotic. Sure. Yeah. Right. Um, let's talk about uh, Money in the Bank and Takeover this past yeah. weekend. Those are two events that happened. Yeah, we can talk about that. Uh, let's talk about uh, Big Cass getting the big boot. I, I thought he was employed two days ago, and then what happened? Right. Uh, then we got to talk about uh, the loss of Vader. Uh, yeah, that, that news came across today. It wasn't completely unexpected, but uh, we need to talk about that. Definitely. Yes, and then we're going to uh, whatever else crosses our mind tonight. I'm sure there were other things. I just can't really think of them right now. Oh, yeah. Plenty of stuff here. On this episode of the Cheaters Never Pin podcast. So uh, let's get this thing started. Tom, can you do me a favor? What's that, Jason? Can you ring that bell for me, buddy? Sure. You're 
listening to the Cheaters Never Pin Podcast, a proud part of the Section 328 Network, bringing you all the best in wrestling from WWE, New Japan, and beyond. Now, live from ringside, it's Mr. Workrate and JC. Oh, that never gets old, Tom. Bong. This is the Cheaters Never Pin Podcast. My name is JC. Here next to me at the commentary table to the stars is my good buddy, Mr. Workrate, Tom. Good as always to be here, JC. Yes, sir. Oh, we got a full plate tonight. We do. So we should we should probably just start not bullshit for like ten minutes, like usual. <laughs> we we kind of did the bullshit already earlier, so that's true. That's true. So let's talk about where, what do we want to start with? I guess we should probably start with the news that came out today: uh, the uh, passing of Leon, Leon White. <laughs> oh, that's totally blanked for a second. I was like, was that his last name? It's funny, you start to go Leon, I want to go Leon Bullpower White, which was uh, his original persona in the AWA um, before he went over to Japan and did the Big Van Vader gimmick. Uh, I don't know, do you want me to go through all the background first, or you just want to I mean, if you want to give a quick overview of Vader, there is not much of Vader I know that is Uh, before my time. Okay. Uh, Vader basically was you know, a, a football guy that just, I mean, if you've ever seen Vader, you understand. Here's a big beefy dude um, and started wrestling in the AWA. Uh, at least that's where I started to see him first in America. And in the, I guess, late 80s, he had a feud early on with Stan Hansen, which would end up playing into things later on. But, um, he was just Leon Bullpower White, this this just big baby face, and it didn't really get over like most gimmicks in the AWA at the time. So he ended up disappearing, and then repackaged in uh, New Japan as Big Van Vader with this uh, kind of three quarter mask thing going on, and this real impressive metallic horn anime ish helmet shoulder pad combo thing which shot out smoke and it it was this whole gimmick but um in his first in his debut match for new japan he comes in beats antonio inoki like the lord and savior of new japan pro wrestling the founder of new japan pro wrestling in three minutes and people flipped out there was a literal riot with people say, oh, they 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 rioted at that. Okay. No, they literally got New Japan banned from the building because <laughs> people <laughs> fucked shit up. And Noki wins or we riot and we actually mean it. <laughs> and they it, it wasn't even like a good fight where this newcomer wins. It was a total squash. Mm-hmm. The legend of Inoki was just. I'd say it was crushed. It wasn't crushed because you can't crush a Noki. He obviously got his win back and all that type of thing. But yeah. uh, they ran them out of the sumo hall. Uh, there was so much controversy with it. New Japan lost their TV slot. There was it was a whole big thing, and uh, but it got him over huge and made him a huge money guy in Japan. And he ended up touring there for a while. He eventually came over to the United States, uh, made his WCW debut. I believe at the 1990 Great American Bash, uh, he fought Tom Zink. The only reason I know this off the top of my head is I watched the match today. Um, But he basically was this complete powerhouse, took the WCW title for a while, uh, was managed by Harley Race, uh, then did time back in uh, Japan and all Japan this time where he uh, wrestled for Baba and uh, got into this big, huge rivalry with Stan Hansen, uh, which resulted in some of the stiffest matches that you'd ever want to see, including one that popped Vader's eye out of the socket, but that's just a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) But later on in his career, uh, he did more WCW stuff. He ended up coming to the WWF, wrestled there for a little while, never really got the full push in wwf uh he he never got a world title run which he probably should have but uh was a main guy for a little while there then ended up putting some other people over uh then eventually faded out of the scene uh 
kind of got some recognition more recently when he had kind of an online feud with Will Ospreay, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Yep. Where, what was it, a year ago or two years ago, he actually had a match with Ospreay because Vader was talking about how the flippy shit just wasn't a thing, and Ospreay's like, like, I'll fight you. I think it was about two years ago. That feels right. But, um, yeah, Vader, Vader was a big part, uh, probably uh, in the 90s was the biggest kind of crossover American gaijin star that went over to Japan and then came back over to WCW. But um, he was, I mean, a really huge size-wise wrestler, but also at the same time, uh, one of the more agile big men that you'd ever get to see. Uh, able to pull off moonsaults for a 400 pound guy was just kind of amazing, but uh shoot fighter. Uh, he did some stuff with UWFI that was the kind of worked shoot thing uh, where he wrestled some great matches there. Just kind of an all around worker. The, like he, he could have easily gotten away on his size, but he could actually work his ass off and, uh, yeah, go out of your way to see some Vader stuff in the late 90s. I mean, if you don't have access to the Japanese stuff, check out some of his matches with Ric Flair and Sting at WCW. Uh, yeah. Just some of his stuff against Cactus Jack is some of the... It's it's painful to watch, really, because those two guys would stiff the hell out of each other and have fun doing it. Yep. Pl- plenty of uh, Leon on the network to watch. If the search function works. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> um, I have not much to add to this, as I am not uh, do not know that much of Vader, for better or worse. So yeah. Uh, but always, always a sad thing to lose a a prominent figure in the community. So yeah, I think he was sixty three. Um, he was battling some heart issues for a couple of years now, and. Uh, he recently had a bout of pneumonia, which he couldn't overcome, but yeah. um, he's had some heart surgery recently, and mm-hmm. it, it was they'd given him a certain amount of time to live, and then it seemed like he had kind of shaken that off and got a better bill of health, and then he was fighting it back again. So yeah. not necessarily out of nowhere with this, but still sad nonetheless. Yep. Much love to... Vader and his family and everyone that trained under him and knew him. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to other subjects now that we get that kind of out of the way. Better to do that first, I think. Yeah. Just bring let's everyone just, down. Yeah. And then we can build you back up and yeah. let's start with money in the bank. <laughs> should we do that or should we do takeover first? Uh, we can go chronologically. We can go takeover. That's fine. Okay. Let's go takeover Saturday night. From the United Center in Chicago, Illinois. This was a good show. That, that's shocking, isn't it? I that know. The NXT TakeOver show would be a good like, show. There, I have issues with it. But, I mean, it was it was good. I don't think it's been... I, it, has, it wasn't the level of a lot of... Like, is it the best TakeOver ever? No. But it was... It was good. I I was sports entertained for three hours or two and a half hours, whatever it was. Yeah. We'll we'll argue later, but let's get into it. Yeah, that'll be the end of this segment. All right. uh, The Undisputed Era retained their NXT Tag Team Championships, defeating Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch. 16 minutes. For now. For now, yeah. Then they would proceed to lose them on Tuesday. Spoilers, JC. All right. You know what? If the WWE app pushes it out and they publish it on the website, it's not a spoiler anymore. That was we'll, a, we'll, we'll get more into this when we do pin, pin mail. mail. Yeah, there's a pin mail question about it. Yeah. Um, good match. Solid tag team opener. Orkin and Birch are great. Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong are great. Roddy still got shitty little boots and he's a piece of shit. Yep. Fuck you, Roddy. And then you got your payback. <laughs> But yeah, just, I mean, a by the books, excellent tag match. Just literally everything you would have expected from these four guys. And I don't mean that saying like they didn't like rise above and put on a good match because they absolutely did. But 
but no, it's 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 the type of match you expected from them. It was a very good match. It, is it? Is it at the? I mean, it depends on what you're looking for. Is it going to be at the level of like a DIY versus revival or something like that? Not necessarily, but um, one of the things that I read in discussion about it was it did its job in that it elevated Oni and Danny Burch. It, for sure, it elevated them as. I mean, these are two guys that have basically been been doing jobs the last what, six, nine months, something like longer. That. And it elevated them as legitimate contenders. Yeah. Which is what you want to do in NXT. Yeah. Well, let's hope they keep them that level. Yeah. Uh, thanks. My echo is going off and I don't know why. That's always fun. Uh, Ricochet defeats Velveteen Dream in 22 minutes and 10 seconds. This was my match of the night. Yeah. How long is Velveteen Dream going to be on that NXT roster? It can't be that long, much longer, can it? I hope forever. Simply because I do not want Vince McMahon anywhere near this gimmick. Yeah. I agree. I, I mean, I understand that, but. They've got to be looking at what they see down there and going, oh, we could use. But I don't think they necessarily, as tempting as it would be to bring him up, I don't think they. I think you need to cleanse the roster a little bit more before you start calling up even more people. We, yeah, there needs to be. There has not been a solid purge in a very long time. And it needs to happen. Just because the purge involves a seven foot person doesn't mean that's a lot of people. That's just one person. <laughs> Would you either have seven one foot size big casses or one seven foot sized big cats? <laughs> the answer is neither, obviously. How you doing? Uh Shayna Baszler defeated Nikki Cross uh by choking her out while she was smiling and laughing in nine minutes and twenty five seconds to retain the NXT women's championship. This was fun. This was the worst match of the night. Stop. It was. You can't tell I me it was it. you. I, I'm not. I'm not saying it wasn't enjoyable. It was a match, and I went cool. But it wasn't. Uh, this was. If you're gonna look at these five matches and pick one to be the worst, this is it. Sure. Okay. Uh, I I thought it added something to Shayna Baszler. It was. She has been this kind of robotic. I'm a badass. I'll beat everyone's ass type thing. It, it gave her something else to do. It, it, it showed, it showed the slightly more dimensional side of her. And I enjoyed that. And I love Nikki cross. So yeah, Good match. that's my issue. Nikki cross. Who's just kind of floating around doing absolutely nothing. Because what can she do right now? You've, I mean, she has, she had a good gimmick with Sanity, and yeah. then they took Sanity away from her. So now, now, literally, all the Sanity has left her. But think about it this way: Carmella got left behind when Enzo and Cass got called up, and look how that turned out for Carmella. Exactly. How you doing? So we need to find somebody without a chin to help <laughs> Nikki Cross. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't think of anyone without a chin fast enough. Find another Braun Strowman victim. <laughs> uh, Aleister Black retained the NXT championship in 14 minutes, uh, defeating the man of rock, Lars Sullivan. Who, who was so dominant that a completely missed kick finished him off. Yes. But the story of that match is that it took two black masses to get him down. So it shows the second that, one just maybe not as strong. I don't know. It was it was really the gust of wind from the slap <laughs> that really did him in. It sent a sonic wave towards Lars and knocked him to the ground. It's one of those like Street Fighter Hayduken things where the hit doesn't actually happen, but the the impact of it. Well, Black's all into the occult and black magic and everything. So you could think like maybe he can do it and just like control the person that way. 
is it like Skyrim where it's like the dragon force or whatever the hell it is, the Hoomba or he's an airbender or yeah. something. I don't know. Uh, then the main event of the evening, Tommaso Ciampa defeated Johnny Gargano in 35 minutes. Cause Johnny's dumb. I, I hated the finish of this match. I'm sorry. I know you did. And I fucking hated it. I didn't. All right. You go first and then I'm going to pick apart everything you say. Fine. It was the right outcome because you know, you're doing a rubber match. (sighs) So Chomp is going to win. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm not fine with that finish and the way it was booked. In the sense of what? In the sense that the DDT took him out or the fact that basically everybody tried to stop Gargano and the match was won, but he still had to bring him into the ring and then stupidly expose himself? That's the part I hate. That white meat baby face, no bigger baby face in the company than Johnny Gargano. Like, they put that element in him. I do not like that. He took off his wedding ring, spit on it, and threw it into the crowd. I do not care. He is a white meat baby face with morals. Like, yet you know what? The and the the edge of it there is, yeah, you you put him through the table and send him off on a stretcher. But I don't like the rest of it. And then I do not like the one DDT taking him out with the uh, two by exposed or not. I think it's weak. I think it's a weak finish. But it's the hardest part of the ring that has been made harder. Nope. Nope. The hardest part of the ring is the apron. He was on the mat. He was close to the apron. Everything is close to the apron. It's only 20 by 20. The apron's been removed. (laughs) That by default is the new hardest part of the ring. I just thought it was, I don't know. And the end, like, it just kind of, the, the ref missing and everything. It just felt so contrived. Like, oh, look, he's tapping. And as soon as you see uh, that fucker Ciampa tapping, right, with no ref in sight, you're like, all right, well, I know the finish. Fucking he's going to do some shit to Gargano, and it's going to be game over. And that's exactly what happened. Don't give away your finishes. You knew it was, first of all, you knew it was going to happen five minutes into the match. You He's not going to win two straight matches and have Chompa. You don't like, know that. Leave. Why? Why can't he this, win? Why can't he win two straight? Why? Because this isn't 1984 and he's not leaving the fucking territory, JC. <laughs> he could be getting called up and leaving the territory. You don't know that. He's not fucking going anywhere. No. They're milking this for three matches. Uh, I mean, do I want to see it again? Yes. Do I have hope and faith it's good next time and not just kind of okay yes the third match will be best of three falls winner murders the loser the, each fall the third match should be three stages of hell help me When's out the, what is that because there is no real definition to three well, stages I mean, you of could, hell you could set it with whatever right you obviously can't do one stage as first blood anymore so the first stage could be standard Standard match. Second one could be street fight. Third one could be cage. Okay, so you have the first one. First one ends, and then they need a 10-minute intermission while they both put on jeans. (laughs) Because you can't have a street fight without jeans. And you couldn't do cowboy boots. And you don't want to do street fight because you just did street fight. Shit. Uh, So let's do... uh, Texas death match. That's totally different. Do a a strat match between these two. You've, you've set the precedent with Gargano and the beating Ooh. him with the belt. Oh, yeah. And if there is one person to tell an old school story like that, it is Hunter Hearst Helmsley. He watched some NWA that day and went, yep, we're going to do that. <laughs> Dusty would have wanted a bull rope match. Yep. Uh, hey, it's, it's, Steve Carino is still around. That's true. You can still do a bull rope match. And he's working there. Yep. <laughs> Any other thoughts on TakeOver? Uh, no, I, th- I think that's pretty much it. Uh, it was cool to see uh, Mustache Mountain win the belts 
several days later from yeah. Roddy and uh, Kyle O'Reilly. At the UK Championship Tournament. Oh, I guess we can talk about this here because it is technically NXT. Uh, Johnny Saint announcing, or Johnny Saint and Triple H announcing the uh, creation of NXT UK, an all new brand that will have another women's and tag titles and will air on the network uh, with tapings in like a month. Yeah. So that's exciting. It's it's nice to see that they're actually doing something with UK Championship instead of just trotting it out every once in a while and yeah, just just throwing it on the occasional NXT taping. Yeah, it'll be good. And uh, the ta- all the talent they've signed is solid, so it'll be it'll be good. Yeah. Money in the Bank was another show that went on for eighteen and a half hours because that's the new normal. <laughs> I love how they expanded the four hours and still went over. Yeah. What the hell? I was all ready to be like, all right, I'm good starting at seven. If this is going to be over at 11. It, no, it, it was like 11 o'clock and they were just starting the ladder match. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as I saw Rhonda and Nia Jax coming out at like 1030, I was like, oh, fuck. We are screwed. Yeah. It's all right. Uh, so let's run down the card here. Because that's what we do. That's what we do. And tell you our opinions. Because that's what you pay the big bucks for. Absolutely. Thank you, Patreon members. Yes. Uh, The Bludgeon Brothers defeated Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson in seven minutes uh, to retain their SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Would have been a good match. They needed more time. It was. I mean, it was fine like it was, but could have been good. Match was so good, they did it again on Tuesday. With the same outcome. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Tuesday's uh, match was actually a better match. Yes. But uh, Daniel Bryan defeated Big Cass by submission in the Curtain Jerker. 16 minutes. Defeated him by submission. Loser leaves town match, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, this match was fine. It was Daniel Bryan and Big Cass. It was Big Cass, arguably Big Cass's best singles match on the main roster. Congratulations. Get out. Yeah. Uh, the news broke Tuesday morning afternoon. Uh <laughs> Look at the page on WWE.com now. The headline, Big Cast Released. One sentence, WWE has come to terms on the release of William Morrissey, Big Cast. He didn't even get future endeavored, y'all. <laughs> the old Simpsons references. So that's it. After 20 years, goodbye and good luck. I don't remember saying good luck. <laughs> so here, here are all the other details, and I'm kind of, I'm going to, paraphrase from pro wrestling sheets report here's apparently all the things that led to this firing and why he was not future endeavored uh of course when he shot on the little person <laughs> against Vis- vince's wishes the little person that was uh portraying daniel bryan not not just a smaller person than big cast but an, no, actual... an actual an actual little person yeah yep shot on him cool uh then there's this part, which I had not heard until today. According to Sports Illustrated, Big Cass was apparently drinking during the European tour, which took place a week after the uh, little person incident. And Big Cass allegedly had attitude issues. They also claim being intoxicated in public is one of the underlying reasons for his firing. <laughs> I've also heard about a particular bus incident. Multiple sources tell us one of the incidents which rubbed people the wrong way happened in private, however, on the WWE bus that was chauffeuring talent. We're told the bathroom lock was apparently broken, but Cass didn't realize it and thought he was being pranked. After being stuck inside for too long, a claustrophobic slash angry Cass broke down the door. This meant people had to embarrassingly use the bathroom afterward with no door. This obviously made some of the riders on the bus unhappy. <laughs> So, neither yep. one of those guys were too liked in the locker room, apparently. Yeah. Well, I mean, was it? It was like a year ago or a year and a half ago. We all thought we all had heard Cass had heat anyway for like being a huge Trump supporter in the locker room, and everybody being like, "Shut your fucking mouth." Now, see, I don't see how that would necessarily be that big of a thing because, I mean, well, your boss is a huge Trump supporter, right? And there's but there's other people in that locker room who are as well but right 
And I'm not saying that, but I'm saying like if you're spouting that shit off on a bus and in in the room with the boys, and uh, you know your boss is flying a charter jet and is sitting in gorilla all day, I don't think a lot of the boys are going to be too happy with you. Yeah. So it depends on how far you go with it. So. So yeah, goodbye and good luck. Um, who is the first indie to book Enzo and Cass? The Impact Zone. Oh, God. All of the names on the Reddit thread of people be like, what is blank doing in the Impact Zone? <laughs> <laughs> some of them were good. Some of them were like, yeah, you're stretching it. I always love the ones that were like, what is Large Cassidy doing here? That's yeah. always good. Uh, All right. Uh, Bobby Lashley defeated Sami Zayn in six minutes. Uh, and cool. broke him, damn it. Apparently he was broken before was the yeah. issue, which is why we hadn't actually seen them be, be really super physical at all until uh, this match. And Sami is now, uh, this is reported in Alabama undergoing testing for whatever may be wrong with him. And Alabama's not good because that should be James Andrews, and that generally means that means you got scopic surgery of some variety. <laughs> yes, one of your joints is not working properly. <laughs> Go to Alabama. Generally, if you're playing baseball, you're out for the season. Mm-hmm. Sam is needs that that elective Tommy John surgery. Yeah, <laughs> just remove all his tendons. <laughs> well, if he if he if he's unable to wrestle, that means that he can come to. Kane's opening night. Why? To debut the goal song. God, no. Jesus. Stop. <sighs> Seth Rollins defeated Elias in 17 minutes. And then what happened? Dolph Ziggler defeated Seth Rollins in probably also 17 minutes on Monday night. <laughs> Somebody on Reddit said this is nine years straight that uh, Dolph Ziggler oh. has one in every calendar year since 2010 Dolph Ziggler has held a piece of gold in world wrestling entertainment that's kind of a cool stat yeah and people want to give him shit for being real useless they obviously think of something for him. now last year's was really useless because that was the I won the US title fuck your US title now I'm gone for six months <laughs> like <laughs> like did he win that just so that like took care of that year <laughs> like they had absolutely nothing for him and he just goes to creative and goes hey can i just have the title for a day i'll just throw it down it'll, God it'll damn be, it we have to keep the fine. streak alive <laughs> all right vince i don't get it but but that sounds great <laughs> um i don't have a super lot to say about the seth rollins last match it was a seth rollins match so it was good cool if if you're watching live on twitch you can see that the cat just opened the door <laughs> I, was, I was even looking <laughs> that's right uh ad break uh come and watch us every week uh when we record live on twitch.tv slash cheaters mvr pin uh you get to see things like this cat and the cat opening the door and i hope i hope the people listening think the cat actually like stood up and like opened the door because that's what happened and you missed it my cats have opposable thumbs. You did. You missed it. That's crazy. Uh, Alexa Bliss won the second ever Money in the Bank ladder match for a women's contract for the championship. This was a good match. This was, I enjoyed this one a lot more than last year's women's Money in the Bank match. I did too. Couple of real bad spots. Yeah. I mean, well... I think you're going to find that in most Money in the Bank matches, male, female, whatever. Yeah. The likelihood of, of boy, I've got to really reach for this briefcase because the person hasn't looked up here yet. <laughs> and we just... had that happen several times in both matches. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The the worst one happened in this match, though, the, with Becky reaching and reaching and reaching and reaching and reaching and reaching. Oh, wait. No, no, no there's Naomi. That was awkward. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but this but, is the danger that you're going to run into with matches like that. Like yeah. you need uh, with people going up the ladder, you have to understand where you are on the ladder. Like don't just jump up like seven rungs and then 
realize who else is around. Like, take a few steps and kind of realize, okay, no one's here yet. Like, kind of give a hint. Act like least. you're gassed or something. Like, yeah. Maybe wobble a little bit. Oh, you know, I took a headshot earlier. I, I kind of lose my balance because whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, everyone carried their own. Lana was pretty good. Lana was great. Lana is the best. Lana number one. They, the crowd was hyped for her when she would start climbing the ladder, though, because I think they also wanted to watch the world burn. <laughs> the crowd wanted every single person to win this match except Natalia. Poor Natty. Yeah. Because every single person, as they started to hit the ladder, I mean, give Becky the damn title. Right. Just the crowd ate that up. Anytime she got halfway to, like, halfway in the wrong, it's like the crowd went nuts. And then Charlotte had her fans. So when she started to go off the crowd, which and Lana, again, like you mentioned, she goes up the wrong crowd starts popping for her Hell, You know, Naomi goes up there. Natalia goes up. Like, Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Good match though. I can, o- the best thing is it will only keep getting better. So, yeah, they, they, the first women's match last year um, was relatively tame and not tame from the sense of whatever, but I, they, I think they were extremely cautious with the spots that they were doing. Like they didn't want to yeah. do too many spots off of the ladder or anything like that. They still were a little bit protective this time where they had a spot where there was a girl on either side of the ladder and they did the, two people are climbing up third person pushes over the ladder, Mm -hmm. which with the men nowadays, they do it and they'll bounce off the ropes or even like go fall outside of the ring, that type of thing with the women. They jumped off the ladder as it was coming down and kind of landed on their feet and fell down that type of thing. Like, but to be honest, that's more realistic. Like if you're on a ladder and it starts to fall over, you're probably going to jump off it as it's going along and find a safe place to land. You're not just going to stay on it the entire time and fall off wherever the hell it takes you. Right. Yeah. You're not like an action figure. You're not stuck to the ladder until it falls completely over. <laughs> True. So I good. enjoyed that a lot. I, I thought I thought everybody did a good job and it, it was it was booked well and yep. Alexa won, which was. Kind of a little bit unexpected, but yeah, my money was on uh, Natalia. Then but Alexa won. in the crowd boos. Yeah, well, you know. You think Speaking they... of everyone in the crowd booing, oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, you think maybe that? No, nah, they could. I was gonna say, you think that gets changed on the fly because of crowd reaction, or no? But no. After what was done with it later on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was all all part of the plan. Uh, sp- let me start my transition over again. Like, we didn't just segue for a hot second there. Uh, speaking of booing, Roman Reigns oh. defeated Jinder Mahal in 15 minutes. <laughs> in the official piss break match. Oh, my God. And here's the thing. They're going to go out there and do a match with, like, out of 15 minutes, there were probably f- seven minutes of headlocks. Oh, God. And I feel bad because, I mean, for all intents and purposes, they're both good guys. Yeah. Uh, Jinder's a good guy. Locker room wise, he seems to be friendly enough to people outside the ring. Yeah. Uh, And nobody's ever really accused Roman of being a bad person. No. Except when he does steroids. (laughs) He got popped. You want to die? You want to die? You want to die early? Go ahead. Yeah. Um. And here's my thing. This is Roman's worst pay-per-view match in a, a long time. I couldn't even quantify it. It just, meh. The whole thing was just very meh. Yeah, it's, I mean, we, we've had our criticisms of gender before, and it, it's a different type of match. It, 
they don't really work that well with each other for their wrestling styles necessarily. No. So it, you're going to run into some conflicts and it, it wasn't great, but not a good pair, really shitty storyline, two characters. No one gave a shit about in Chicago. Yeah. The crowd though did not shit on it as much as I thought they would. Did no. they, sh- did they shit on it a lot? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not, a- they did not hijack it though. And I was proud of them. They, they did the wave, but as we know, if you do the wave during a sporting event, it's not disrespectful at all. It's just people having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> and what do we do in WWE? We like to have a good time. Yeah. Uh, let's see how. Carmella defeated Asuka in 11 minutes. And if you Go hear ahead. that, it sounds ahead, crazy. Shit all over. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm not going to shit all over this. I thought it was fucking great. Thank you. Okay. James Ellsworth is back. And the way they brought him back, too. It wasn't just a run-in. It wasn't just... He shows up on the apron in the full, like, giant kimono robe with the mask. Yeah, it was like Asuka, too. Yeah. Asuka is ready for everyone except for someone wearing her clothing. And then it freaks the shit out of her. And then when Ellsworth takes off the mask and she sees Ellsworth, she freaks out more. Asuka is actually afraid of James Ellsworth, is what I learned. Despite the fact that James Ellsworth basically goes full Jim from the office with like this kind of like <laughs> look and wink. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's me. Huh? He uh, asked, he shrugged her. <laughs> so good to see him back, though. Yeah. As long as they don't turn him into a, a, a dog this time, it's such a great yeah. spot for him. And Carmella needs a heater, like, especially when she starts to kind of get over a little bit, because she's starting to get over a little bit now. Or not, I shouldn't say get over. She is over. But she's starting to get more of a baby face reaction. Because she's so, inter- her ring work may not be great, but she's so entertaining. Yeah. So. It's well, working off of someone. Yeah. Where having her continuously cut promos isn't necessarily the thing like she's got to work her promos off of somebody else whether yeah. it be her opponent whoever she happens to be feuding with at the time or someone like ellsworth that can bounce back and forth a damn cord going everywhere who can bounce back and forth off of each other yeah for sure uh aj styles defeated shinsuke nakamura in a last man standing match in 31 minutes and 15 seconds uh, to retain the WWE Championship, this is the best match of their feud. Yeah, by far. Uh, so this was this was a great blow off. I thought the match was really good. Um, I thought it, it, the story of the match was good. Uh, I would have liked to have seen Nakamura win it because now, I mean, I guess we'll see, we'll see kind of where they go with him a little bit. Yeah. Uh, since AJ does already have a new number one contender as determined right. by a gauntlet match Tuesday night on SmackDown. Well, I had thought I had seen that uh, Nakamura was setting his sights on the U S title. So, Oh, that's right. That's right. Cause we had the, we had Willow return and <laughs> cut a freaking promo. Yeah. Yeah, so that's cool. That is right. You're you're right. I totally blanked that out. Uh, and we need to have a U.S. champion who can't speak English. Oh God, that's the entire. Oh Jesus Christ! It's just like yes. <laughs> oh, the non-American should always. Oh, that's such good heat. God damn it! God damn it! The the Japanese will win it. Be the U.S. champion on. On the fourth of July, that would be wonderful. At Wait, the Great American Bash, we can do that. What day of the week is the fourth of July this year? It's a Wednesday. Oh my God, they're totally gonna do it the day before. Yeah. On an aircraft carrier. Yeah. <laughs> yes, with play with you know, explosions, but no pyro, that's, but explosions. That's the biggest a boat can be. <laughs> it's a boat they put other boats on. Yeah. <laughs> Vince, they put planes on that. Other boats. Oh. <laughs> what happens when the boat sinks? There's other boats on it. The people get on the boat, they go off. 
It's a boat with other boats. It's a boat with tinier boats. <laughs> It's like those dolls, those Russian dolls. God damn it! Boats. I need Russian nesting boats. <laughs> they can turn into a robot. <laughs> Get the Camp WWE people on that. <laughs> Let's book Optimus Prime for for WrestleMania. God damn it! Bring me Frank Welker for goddamn WrestleMania. I will be there. <laughs> it's like what? Let's book The Undertaker versus Optimus Prime. <laughs> what they're going to do is they're going to have another Funaki. Okay. And dub him with Frank Welker, the Optimus Prime voice. <laughs> Optimus Prime just, indeed. <laughs> I'm in. Yeah, why not? Uh, oh, yeah. Rusev is the number one contender for the WWE title. Happy Rusev Day. Happy Rusev Day. Oh. <laughs> uh, to do where were we? Uh, Ronda Rousey defeats Nia Jax by disqualification, so Nia Jax retains the Raw Women's Championship. Uh, and then before before let's saying? talk about the match before we get to the disc. Let's talk about the match first. Okay. Uh, Ronda came out smiling. I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with that ever. They fixed it on Monday. Wasn't okay with it on Sunday. Well, understand this too. Mysterious door closes. Um, understand this though. Going into the match, it was just kind of a challenge type of deal. I mean, Ronda didn't necessarily have a huge like anger thing with Nia. It was a challenge. Yep. So she went into it. She, I mean, again, she's happy to be there, mm. which I know, I know part of me hates that too, but, but she comes out, she's getting cheered. So why not? It's like, this is still cool. I'm okay with this. Yes. I know it's not her in UFC where every single person walks down to the ring. Like they've just watched their family be murdered. No, she's not, she's not quote unquote in the zone. And that's what hurt her in the beginning of that match. She wasn't in the zone and she got her ass kicked through the first part of it. Yeah, I guess you're so, right. I don't know. So, so I, yeah, I, I kind of like the idea of having, or at least how they kind of played that off was, and I don't know if they did that intentionally. I doubt that seriously, but if you want to try to get past that, it's like, no, she wasn't in the zone. She came out there. She, this is her first ever singles match on TV. It's a title match. She's kind of happy to be here. She's like waving to her friends and stuff. And Naya came out there and just ragged all the shit out of her. Yep. And that was good. It was pretty great. And uh, Rhonda tried submissions and things like that. And Naya used her size to get around it. And I think it was a pretty good match. It was a very good. It match. was a lot be It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was very good. Um, what made it better was when, out of nowhere, Alexa Bliss shows up, and beats Ronda Rousey the fuck up with the briefcase, and then turns and beats Nia Jax up with the briefcase, and starts to cash it in, and then goes. Wait a minute, and then <laughs> it's, out of it's them all more. What? Like, no, no, wait. I've seen how this plays out. Let me go take care of the thing that's going to ruin this. I would like to say the best moment of this whole thing: John Cone is apparently the only referee that's ever been briefed on how the money in the bank briefcase works. He accepted it immediately, turned and went. She's cashing it in and rang the bell. <laughs> There, there do wasn't, you want to do it? There wasn't 20 minutes of this? looking at them going like, I don't, huh? What do I do with this thing? Look, here's look at you, Kyoto. want me to go on a trip? Yeah. Money in the bank. Is there money in this? Uh, so Alexa Bliss left Money in the Bank as the Raw Women's Champion. And that was the correct decision. Yep. And I totally, everything in my house is losing its shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the main event of the evening... The new Mr. Monster in the bank 
Braun Strowman defeats Bobby Roode, Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, Kofi Kingston, Rusev, Samoa Joe, and The Miz to uh, win that contract and grab that briefcase. Good match. Obvious, obvious yeah. winner. Obvious winner is obvious, but it wasn't bad. I'm good with it. If this means it that was... you're going to put Braun over Brock, I'm fucking good with it. Yeah. Um, it says 1953. It seems shorter. I thought that. I don't know why, yeah. but it just. Yeah. It's it was missing something to me. I don't know if it was because I was expecting, like, as a main event, and how past Money in the Bank matches have gone, and you've got. I mean, you had eight people in this one. There's normally like six, right? There's yeah, eight uh, in this thing. Six or seven. So you had people that just went missing for like 10 minutes. Like Bobby Roode completely disappeared. Yep. He got knocked out early and then went to like the concession stand and resized a t-shirt and then <laughs> suddenly came back like 10 minutes later and decided, oh shit, I should climb yeah. up the ladder. So that that that's one of the, and especially with the outside spots that they were doing uh, with Braun and well eliminating him early by covering him in ladders because ladders are real heavy. Well, they're made of steel, Tom. They're they're not steel ring steps though. Are they made out of steel ring steps? If they were made out of steel ring steps, each ladder would be about seventy three hundred pounds. So you got to figure each set of those ladders are 7,500 pounds each. So, yeah. Von Strowman is very strong. Yeah. There's a reason they call him the monster. Yeah. So, and then they murdered Kevin Owens. (laughs) Uh, But, I mean, all that spot and all that stuff was being, like, built up outside. So it stopped being a ladder match for a while. Like... Nothing was being done in the ring. You had stuff that was being done on the ramp, and yeah, I guess that's just a, I guess that's trying what to it set was. up that spot. Yeah, the the big spot was Kevin being thrown off the ladder this year. Yep. A, a good spot. Don't get me wrong. Oh yeah, and glad he's okay. Yeah, because it's a dangerous spot to do. Right. But uh, it was it was a perfectly fine match. I thought this pay per view exceeded expectations yeah i i think so too i mean again i was a little disappointed with the men's match um just because again i i look forward to those money in the bank matches especially when kofi kingston's involved and kofi really didn't do much anything like there wasn't much in the ways of like ladder spots i nothing like was the only memorable thing that I came out of that match with was Braun winning the title and Kevin Owens almost dying. That was it. Yep, that's about right. So with eight men in a Money in the Bank match, how often do you come out of a match not remembering one ladder spot? Yeah. True. So, so that that's that's what threw me. I mean, and I don't know if it's a thing of the they have to kind of protect the ladder spots too, because you have two money in the bank matches. So you have the women's match and women are doing the ladder spots. So do you want the men to upstage them by doing the spots, but quote unquote better or more dangerous or however the case is? I don't know why I'm necessarily complaining. Cause I, I hate letter matches for the most part because they're dangerous as all hell. Yeah. So. You had to balance them out a lot. Yeah. Cool. Well, you know what it's time for now, Tom? That we made it through all that in a reasonable what? amount of time with like 10 minutes left to go. Yeah. What's that, JC? It's time for pin mail. Uh, do we have a particular theme that we're doing this in today? Uh, Vader. It's time. It's time. It's pin mail. Time, 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 time. That works. Ah. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Uh, so let's start from the first pin mail that came in uh, from at inlock17 Noah's Arc 84 on the Twitter machine. 
What were your thoughts on the Hardy 24 episode on the network? Honestly, a little surprised they touched on Jeff's drunk driving incident not long ago. Uh, I probably should have read that question because then I would have watched it. I have not watched it. <laughs> we will come back to that next week. Please resend that message. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will say this, though. I I agree in that I'm a little bit surprised that they yeah. address that. But at the same time, from what I've heard from other people, they address a lot of the demons, I guess you could say, so, with the Hardys. So I saw the issues that they had. I saw one clip out of it talking about the Victory Road match with Sting. Ah, yes. And they have Sting and Joe and AJ and everybody kind of talking about it. And they, <laughs> it was, it was deep. It was good. It was very well done. Yeah. Uh, from H Tom Servo on the Twitter. Pro or anti-spoiler, especially from official sources. Again, this is totally in reference to the NXT titles changing hands at the UK Championship Tournament. Uh, night two, which was filmed yesterday and airs this weekend on the network. Uh, it is 2018. People have their cell phones with them all the time. The news is going to get out, so they should just go ahead and say it. Again, this isn't the territories where, like 1984, where you can have the same title change happen in like seven spots in the state and nobody hears about it from anybody else. Yeah. Um, it would have gotten out there. It would have spread, whether it be Meltzer or Pro Wrestling Sheet or, you know, Satin mm -hmm. or one of those guys. It's going to get out there. And, yeah, for the most part, they try to keep things like, hey, there are spoilers here. But it's going to get out. Yeah. And I think you kind of want the exposure, too. I mean, you have a title change. Ooh, i got to watch that. i got to watch that special. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it brings the attention, especially for somebody like a tag team that came out and defended their titles on TakeOver mm -hmm. to have them lose their titles. Maybe as an NXT fan, you may still not necessarily be familiar with Mustache Mountain. Right. And that gives the rub to the WWE or NXT UK group mm -hmm. as it is. So... Yeah, it, it, it does a little bit to kind of give the rub to the new guys. And yeah, yeah, I, I don't think it really harms the product necessarily any. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's unfortunate that it got pushed out the way that it did. So like I knew immediately when it happened, like if I yeah. didn't want to know. But I've also learned to turn those off for the most part. So you can turn the notifications off. You can ignore, you know, the Observer or Pro Wrestling Sheet or whatever if you want. But when something's getting taped, I mean, it's it's one of those things about, like, NXT tapings. NXT tapes for four weeks when they do their tapings. Like, eventually you'll find out, especially if there's a title change or something like that, you're going to hear about it. Yeah. So... Uh, next question. Ooh, that one just came in live. That's fun. Money in the Ooh. Bank, uh, from Dan McLaughlin at Kaniac 176. Money in the Bank I, was the first pay-per-view. Are they still called that? I've seen in years. How would you rank it on a scale of one to 10? Seems like some good matches, AJ Shinsuke, and some stinkers, Reigns gender. I'd give that one a hard seven and a half. I, w I won't go that far. I won't use fractions or decimals. I'll, I'll go I'll go seven. Okay. I mean, it, it had good matches. I don't want to do six. See, that, that was the thing. It's like, I go, well, do yeah. I do six? Well, it because six puts it close to meh to me. And it was it was more than that. There, yeah. there were some really good matches, especially that uh, Shinsuke AJ Styles match was one of the better matches WWE has had on a main pay-per-view in a while. For sure like a non NXT match. Yep. Uh, in the Twitch chat from Twitch from Seth, where will NXT UK rank on your WWE shows worth watching above or below 205 NXT, etc. Um, it'll be above 205 live. It'll it, even with Leo rush. Even with Leo rush. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to see where it, I don't know. It's hard to say. I will definitely watch it because I, I, I've watched so much of a lot of those guys in the past that it's just a natural kind of extension for me. 
coming as a progress fan into it. Yeah, that so. that was that was my thought that you're the one that kind of exposed me to progress and I figured you'd be all over it. I will watch it to begin with just to see presentation. I mean, is it going to be you know, like pretty much NXT with just like some kind of UK flair to it, or are they actually going to go all out with the UK aspect of it and make it a different show just with NXT kind of slapped on there, but, you know, have it like be a completely independent type of show yeah. or it's going to be really interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll be actively watching it first, but I can't guarantee. Also, that I'll are they going to have their own pay-per-views? Jesus. Oh my god. Too many takeovers. <laughs> uh our last pin mail of the night, back to the Twitter from uh at Andrew Doss, fake Andrew Doss. Rank the following NXT matches one through six. Are you ready? Five. <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna give you six matches and you have to put them in order. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Uh Black versus Dream from War Games. Okay. Almas versus Gargano take over Philly. Okay. The latter match for the North American title. Okay. Gargano Ciampa one. Gargano Ciampa two. And Dream versus Ricochet. <sighs> I should have written this down. Um, uh, do you, you want uh, you want a second to think? Okay, give me a second to think okay. and maybe actually can... pull that up so that I can stare at these. Uh, are, are you making your picks uh, Yeah, now? I'm, I'm ready. I'm going to start from the bottom. Now we're here, okay? okay. Uh, number six, I'm going to go with uh, Black versus Dream from TakeOver War Games. Number okay. five is Gargano Ciampa 2. Number four is Almas Gargano. Number three is the ladder match. Number two is Dream versus Ricochet. And number one is Gargano Ciampa one. Okay, I'm staring at it now. That's my picks. Just off the top of my head looking at it. All right, so I will go six. Uh, six, I'll go along with you and go Black versus Dream. Uh, and again, by no means are any of these bad matches. <laughs> right, that's the thing. Except for... It's like picking your children. They're like, okay. Um, <laughs> this is the Sophie's choice of NXT. Yeah. Uh, five. Uh, I'll go along with you with uh, Gargano Ciampa too. Like, yeah. And I don't have a problem with the finish like you do, but. And it, again, it's a very good match, but these are what we're running into here. Yep. Um, and let me know. I wasn't necessarily listening to your rankings. These may be exactly the well, same. Okay, I'm keeping track of it. Um, I'll do the ladder match at four. Okay. The, the, yeah. And again, putting together my prejudice of ladder matches and the fact that you had so many people in that match it makes it a little bit hard to follow sometimes. So true. Uh, I'd like one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I will go dream versus ricochet three. Okay. Um, I like that match a, a lot, but I can't put it ahead of all versus Gargano because that told such a good story. For sure. Uh, and I really love that match. And then Gargano versus Ciampa one is my top. Yeah. For sure. So I think we're relatively close there. Yeah. Pretty much. Cool. All right. I think we're done. I think so. I think this is our longest episode in a while. Right at an hour. It's good. A lot of, well, lot of, I, lot of I knew we were going to have a lot of content. So Yeah. And we still kept it to an hour. This is our most successful podcast of all time. We're done. Good night, <laughs> everyone. Oh, Tom, tell the people where they can find you on the internet. Go to the Twitter machine at Mr. Workrate, at MR Workrate. 
uh, I might be streaming some stuff on Facebook Live if you're really into that, just for Ooh. the whole purpose of uh, the trip this weekend. Got to build that brand, Tom. Uh, I'm also on Patreon. Hey, subscribe to our Patreon and uh, do stuff like that because we're going to be doing a bunch of podcasts this weekend. So this will be one of four that I'll be doing in the next 72 hours or so. Yes. And then I'm going to a live recording of another one so that <laughs> I'm not involved in. So it's just podcast freaking central here. There you go. But uh, yeah, Twitter. You people know this by now. There you go. Find me on the internet at JC Bob at JC B O B B I T T, wherever finer social medias are pervade. Find the show on Twitter at Cheaters in VR Pin. Find us on Twitch at Cheaters in VR Pin. Find us on YouTube at Cheaters Never Pin. Find us on Facebook at Cheaters Never Pin. Find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash section 328. And if you got to buy some shit on Amazon, click our button on cheatersneverpin.com before you do any buying. And we get a small commission off of everything you make and you don't get charged a dime. Oh, and I have a PS4 now. So if you find Mr. Workrate on PS4, you know, friend me. Not that I'm friend- ever allowed to use it. But, you haven't you friended know. me yet. I haven't really been on there. Your children and haven't friended me yet. Do we actually know your PS4 name on there? Because I don't understand. A lot of the people that it's... I know on Twitter have completely different names on like Xbox and PS4. It's and I don't same... understand why. It's the same as my Xbox. Okay. So I try to keep each category the same, right? And I guess you can follow me on Instagram. Maybe I'll try to put some stuff on Ooh. Instagram this oh, weekend too. Can you, can you do some Insta stories? Yeah. Sweet try to do all that kind of technological <laughs> shit uh so next week we'll talk about the uk championship tournament yeah we give the one spoiler but it actually we'll actually have watched it by then so yay yeah uh, we'll talk about the hardy's uh documentary because we promised yeah. well, uh, i guess i'll have to watch that and we'll talk about the build to uh extreme rules coming up Woo! I'm, i can sense I'm the excitement a- see that <laughs> cool all right well let's get out of here so thank you for uh listening to another episode of the cheaters never pin podcast i'm jc i'm tom and we'll catch you on the flip side cool clear Woo! yay <sighs> we did a podcast we did we had a lot to talk about we still kept it to an hour and three minutes we, we're getting to be we got halfway good decent at this, this. yeah Remember when that episode would have taken two and a half hours like a year ago? <laughs> you would have still been ranting about the ending of Chiapa Gargano. Yeah. I would have taken off the headset, got the Uncrustable, would have been a whole I, thing. I think we've both learned to keep our thoughts clear and concise. Yeah. <laughs> we only yelled at each other once. We didn't even yell at each other this time. We've been in much bigger life. I yelled at you this time, so that was kind of cool. Ooh, P.K. Subban is the face of NHL 19. Good. Nice. People are going to get pissed. Yeah. Rene run the, won the Vesna. Yeah. Cool. All right. Have well. we learned uh, whether uh, Boyle got the Masterson or not, or... I don't know. I haven't seen anything about it yet, so I'm going to assume Stalin didn't win it. So. Who you, knows? You, you can't beat cancer, guy. Uh, no. Pekka Rene. Oh, but Gretzky is going to be on the Legends and Ultimate Edition. Oh, shit. Does that mean they'll actually have, like past people in the game can i can i bitch about oh, they have it now they have that mode where you get all the past players cards I wanna, yeah here and there but i want teams i want to play as like you know like the fucking 84 oilers or something wouldn't the pa have to pay out royalties for that at that point oh geez that would be horrible yeah um can I bitch about the fact Ronda Rousey's a pre-order bonus in 2K18 or 19? I'm glad I don't have to pre-order. Like, she's on the fucking roster. Like, I yeah. don't get it. 
That makes no fucking sense to me, dude. Yeah, uh, the past ones, I mean, like Angle. Um, Sting. Uh, Goldberg, Goldberg. Arnold Schwarzenegger. The Colonel. <laughs> the Colonel wasn't a pre-bonus, though. It was just an oh, outfit it? that you could download uh, okay. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sir. Well, I think you have packing to do, and I have a podcast to edit, so I feel like we should keep this yeah. short and concise tonight. And Brian Boyle did win. Okay, cool. Fair enough. Makes sense. He was going to, but... I'm good with that. <laughs> I'm not going to complain. No. Well, thank you to all of you who uh, have watched on Twitch today. Thank you. Yes. We hope you enjoyed the show. We hope you still uh, download it and rate, review, and subscribe wherever your refiner podcasts are purveyed. Welcome to my son's room, by the way. He kicked me out of my little studio. <laughs> uh, so I guess we'll do this again in a week. Sounds good. Next witness day right here. Twitch.tv slash cheaters never pin. Presumably at 9 o'clock. Taylor Hall becomes the first player in Devil's history to win the Hart Trophy. Yeah. Um, as long oh, as... There... Oh, sorry. No, I was just looking. Is there pond hockey in NHL 19? Oh, that would be... Is there? Yes. Kind of looks like it. Ooh, that's fun. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, 9 o'clock next week. Unless times change, just watch the Twitter. Yeah. We'll be there. And uh, I think that'll do it. So, thank you for watching. Have a good night. Bye. Yeah. See ya.